Hi everyone and welcome back to this new video about the control systems theory and we will start with a new topic which is Nyquist diagram. In this example I will discuss the Nyquist diagram using this closed loop system. We have the proportional controller gain k and in cascade with the plant which is shown here and we have again a unity gain feedback system. Now what we have is the following, we have the following questions. Plot the Nyquist diagram. We will do that step by step and we have the following question B is use that Nyquist diagram to determine the range of proportional controller gain K for stability. Okay, let's start with the situation question A. And what we of course also did in the previous videos, we will always use the loop transfer function for the analysis that will also be the case for the Nyquist diagram and we will of course uh, and I'll analyze the situation for in J omega domain. So if I now want to know the loop gain, which is just of course L of S, which is of course the loop transfer function. So if I just start at this point, and if I move to K and then to plan and then make the full circle using the unity gain feedback and at, and at the same point, I will get the k times gs, which is just 400 k divided by the three poles. So it is s plus 2, s plus 5, and s plus 6. As you can see, the order of your loop transfer function doesn't change by adding a gain. So your order of your op loop system was also 3, so your loop transfer function will also have an order of three. What you of course do, and we will set the s equal to j omega, that will of course make our situation, or we will transform our situation from the s domain to the j omega domain. So we will have our loop transfer function 400 k, and we'll just substitute for s j omega, that's actually all what we do, so j omega plus 2 and then j omega plus 5 and then j omega plus 6 and that's actually for the loop transfer function. Now we will use this loop transfer function to determine the or to draw the Nyquist di diagram. Then before we do that let's move again to the gain in the phase of this loop transfer function. Let me do that in black. So if I know the gain, which is just the magnitude of this, which is 400 K divided by the square root of this omega squared plus two squared. I will just make the template ready and I will just substitute later on the value. So I will have the omega squared plus two squared omega squared plus 5 squared on omega squared plus 6 squared. That's actually for this situation. If I want to have the phase, let me also do that. Phase, that is the phi of omega. Now, we will of course again look at this expression. What is the phase contribution of the numerator and what is the phase contribution of the denominator? The phase contribution of the numerator is zero because it's just real value and the phase contribution of the denominator is, of course, the minus arctangent of this expression, minus arctangent of that expression, and now minus arctangent of this expression. We already done, done this, uh, we have already done this in the previous video, so I'll leave the details out. What we get is a minus arctangent, and then the imaginary part divided by the real part, minus arctangent is for the second term, Again, the imaginary part divided by the real part, and then the final term is the minus arctangent imaginary part divided by the real part. So that's actually for the expression for the phase. So we have the gain and we have the phase. So how does a, a Nyquist plot look like? Okay, let me just make a drawing here. So we will have the Nyquist plot. In the Nyquist plot, you will the plot the real part and then the imaginary part of your loop transfer function you will have the real part of your loop and the imaginary part of your loop transfer function in this form how do we start now at for the start we 
let the gain k equal to 1, just as an uh, easy starting point, then this transfer function will just, of course, just 400 divided by this uh, the same expression, so it will not really not change uh, that much. And the phase is, of course, exact same because there is no k dependency here. What you do is uh, you look at some specific key points. One of that is the DC value or the omega is equal to zero. So what you need to know is what's the gain at omega equal to zero, which is just a starting point. Okay, if I look at omega zero for the loop transfer function at the magnitude this will result in 400 of course the k is 1 divided by just 0 that one is 0 that one is 0 you will actually uh, have square root of 2 squared which is just 2 square root of 5 squared which is just 5 and square root of 6 squared which is just 6 so what you get is 2 times 5 times 6 and if you do the math here which will result in an exact form 20 divided by 3, which is approximately 6.67. That's just for the gain. If I also want to know the phase, so what is the phase associated with this one? So if I want to know the phase at 0, just substitute this omega equal to 0 in this expression. You will have uh, omega is equal to 0 here and there and there, and this will result in 0 degrees. So what you see is the following. You have a loop gain, which is just your length of your vector, which is 6.65, with a phase orientation of 0 degrees. Okay, now how do we do that in this plot now? The phase orientation is reference to the real part of your, uh, real part of your graph. So the real positive real part of your graph is this part. And if you have a 0 degrees, you will stay with your arrow here. And your length of your error is determined by the loop gain, which is 6.67. So you make actually a dot here, which has a length of 6.67. And of course, you have a phase orientation of 0 degrees. If you, of course, increase this omega, omega is 1, omega is 10, etc., etc., this will change for sure. And this will of course change because you are making that omega a difference. So that will of course evaluate in this form because you will make the phase negative and you will of course have a lower uh, loop transfer function gain. Now, this is one of the key points. The, another key point is look at the situation where the phase is minus 180 degrees. So at, let me also do that, for, for the phase of minus 180 degrees what do we get now, if you can of course use this expression for the phase and then calculate it at that frequency this happens because this one let me also denote this this one is at omega is zero radians per second specifically now, if i move on with that uh, expression i will have minus arc tangent omega divided by 2 minus arc tangent omega divided by 5 and then minus arc tangent omega divided by 6 which is of course now equal to minus 180 degrees and this will result if you do the math just in the solver you will get very close to 7.21 radians per second and we have denoted this also in the previous videos as the gain margin frequency. And I will also define it here as the gain margin frequency. Okay, so I know at this frequency I will have a phase shift of minus 180 degrees. What is the associated gain? Because I know the phase now. I also know, need to know the phase. I mean the gain. So I can all draw the vector. So I already know that I have to... I have to make the point at this line because it will represent a phase of minus 180 degrees. But I don't know how long that is yet. So I need this expression for the gain to calculate that loop transfer function gain. So what we have is then, again, k is equal to 1 there. So I will substitute the gain margin frequency here. And I will have the 400 
divided by and again the square root and then the square root and then the square root values so what we have is 7.21 squared plus 2 squared and then 7.21 squared plus 5 squared and 7.21 squared plus 6 squared now if you do the math here you will get the value which is very close to 0 0.65 and if you convert this to the dbs which will result in minus 3.75 dbs but i'm interested actually in this value i already know it is a phase orientation of minus 180 degrees so i will be at this line and since this is the origin zero and this part is positive and that part is negative this must be of course in this part minus 0 0.65 which is of course not to scale but i will place it here so it is minus 0 0.65 let me place it here which is maybe much much better so i will have then the following drawing let me just do that in red you will start at this zero radians per second you make the circle you make the plot like this and you will end here and why do we end at this point after three quadrants for each pole in your loop transfer function you will actually move one quadrant so one quadrant for each order so one order another order so it's third order system so what we have now is the full complete Nyquist diagram for this loop transfer function specifically of course for case equal to one which is of course your starting point which is always the case and for the next situation for question b you need to know and you will you will use now the Nyquist diagram to determine the range of your proportional controller gain k for stability now what does the stability means the stability means actually that your plot your Nyquist plot must not encircle the minus one so we have a minus one here i will uh, make it in blue so we have a minus one here which of course not to scale but this is just a minus one and i don't want to encircle that of course by increasing the gain which is now in this uh, for this red uh, situation just one if i now increase my gain for example make it two or three this will blow up and if i encircle that minus one uh, from the left side then i will have an instable situation if i want to know the edge of the instability so just at the uh, at the border so this is marginal stability i would like to know of course when my uh, curve will uh, cross this minus one okay how can we determine what the required gain for that is so what is the maximum gain now since i know from this origin to that is the length of that is 0 0.65 if i want to go all the way to one which is just a gain of one i can just do the following calculation i can say okay i already have that 0 0.6.5 times that additional k must result in one which is just, of course is the or border so the k value is 1 over the 0 0.65 which is now 1.54 now i can say this is the following for stability of our of our uh, closed loop system i need a k which is less than actually 1.54 at k is equal to 1.54 it is marginal stable stable maybe it is unstable because i have a rounding of errors so this is your condition for making the closed loop system stable okay so that's actually for this situation let me also denote this frequency as omega is equal to 7.21 radians per second okay what do we do next 
you will now of course make a plot of this one which is another ex exercise by using this same expression but by substituting the value of k which is now 1.54 i will leave the details out but you will get uh, an another plot which is of course uh, blown up and start actually at a larger gain for zero radians per second and it will make a circle like this i will draw it again which is not really that easy but i will make an attempt and let me do that again and this will be the circle so if i have this the blue line represents now the blue plot represents actually the situation where the loop gain has additional k of 1.54 and this one is for the k of one so let me also denote this this one is for loop gain for k is equal to 1.54 and this is for k is equal to one Okay, this for this for this situation. So we have the situation A and for situation B. For situation A, I need, need to know what the value of k. So this is I need to plot the Nyquist diagram for B. I need to determine the stability for this is the stable situation. If I of course simulate this using, for example, MATLAB or different uh, program, I can of course look at a different situations. So let me do that also. And by the way, this frequency. Where well, I have 7.21 here is also here, and this zero this zero frequency is also here. So if I now make the plot, and I have already prepared this here, and I will zoom in, what you see is the blue line in this case is the L, which is just the situation for gain equal to one, and for this orange line is the situation where the k is equal to 1.54. What you see is at zero radians per second, this is indeed 6.67 and this 10.3 so it is blown up you already see this and if i look at this situation for the initial situation the blue line okay i make this i make this uh, curve and i will approach my minus 180 degrees as phase shift at 7.21 which already calculated and you can see that this is very close to what we are what we have cal uh, also calculated in our analysis so this is minus 0.65 if i look at the blown up version which is the orange one it starts here and it of course crosses the minus one as you can see the real part is minus one at the same frequency at this one and you can see the imaginary part is almost zero you cannot get it exactly zero with by placing this cursor with the hand but it's almost zero you can see that the calculations and the simulation do do match if I now look, of course, to a different uh, diagram, for example, the body plot would always give uh, some more insight. If I zoom in, again, the L is for situation when the loop gain has a value of uh, k is equal to 1. And for the orange, L1, which is the situation where the k is equal to 1.54. Look at the blue line. We have uh, the gain margin of 3.75. We have to also determine that for dB. And the frequency is again the same 7.21 and for the blue line you can see that the phase margin is 15 degrees and it's a frequency but we haven't done this so we would this is just an additional information but what you have now for l1 which is interesting at the same frequency 7.21 i have a gain margin is almost zero which means actually you're at the edge which is margin is stable because that i have a gain margin here of 3.75 which means i can add another gain until I get the unstable situation but I have now zero almost zero margin you can also see that in a phase margin because the phase margin is almost zero and this is the frequency where the phase margin is so this is actually for the station for the Nyquist diagram and also the plots in the simulation which is shown here Okay, this is actually for this example, and I will continue with another example about the Nyquist diagram in a different form, and we will discuss this in further in more detail. 
And if you of course have questions or comments, please place it in the comment section, I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time.